if you're planning on making a new logo for your company, it would be a good idea not to use an apple or any kind of fruit. Since around 2018, Apple has filed a huge number of trademark disputes against businesses hoping to register their own trademarks. Any logo that includes an apple, or even a logo that bears a passing resemblance to an apple, will likely be slapped with a trademark dispute from the $2.6 trillion company. And the reason for this could be down to this terrible logo for an Italian clothing brand. Apple's co-founder and former CEO Steve Jobs passed away in September 2011, after a multi-year battle with cancer. He was an influential yet controversial figure in the world of tech, with a name and face recognised across the globe. Which is even more surprising when you learn that Apple didn't own the trademark to his name. The people who did notice this were two Italian businessmen called the Babato Brothers, so they trademarked the name Steve Jobs for their clothing brand. In 2012, they launched this line of clothing, which was called Steve Jobs. Unsurprisingly, Apple noticed. Apple obviously filed a dispute against Steve Jobs. Even though it was in very poor taste to take advantage of a dead guy, this was dismissed before it even made it to court. While the logo did bear a resemblance to Apple's own logo, as it also used the bite and leaf, the reason given for the dismissal was the letter J is an edible, and therefore the bite could not be ripping off Apple's own iconic logo. And that was that. Apple lost. Flawless victory. The Steve Jobs brand is still alive, but just barely. Their website is still under construction to this day, and their Facebook page hasn't been updated since 2022. Most of the more recent posts are advertising a video game that was released to mixed reviews in 2020 by an Italian game company. There are some posts on their Facebook page about the brothers investing in video games, so this is likely the result. Following the dismissal, they also mentioned they intended to release electronics under the Steve Jobs brand, which I'm guessing didn't happen. So it looks like this cheap marketing stunt didn't really work. The clothing company has basically been mothballed, and the Steve Jobs brand is now shilling a mediocre video game that no one played. This dispute with Steve Jobs was settled all the way back in 2017, and since then, Apple is doing anything it can to protect its own trademark. This New York Times article documents a number of occasions where Apple has filed disputes against other companies attempting to register a trademark with an Apple in the logo, and most of these are completely unrelated to computers or tech. These logos include one resembling female genitalia, a curbside pickup startup named Citrus, a Wisconsin public school district, a Norwegian political party, a German cycling path, and a card game made by Mattel called Apples to Apples. It doesn't matter if the logos even resemble Apple's logo. If the logo includes an apple, or even has some kind of fruit, Apple will dispute it. One of the more well-known examples was for an app called Prepair, a meal recipe app that had been operating since at least 2016, but Apple didn't file a dispute until 2020. The matter was settled when Prepair changed the leaf on their logo to a half circle shape, but as a cheeky middle finger to Apple, the old logo can still be seen on their website. According to this New York Times article, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, and Google combined have made a total of 136 trademark disputes, while Apple alone has made 215. So why all the bullying? My best guess is when you lose a pretty embarrassing dispute regarding the name of your well-known co-founder, Apple took that loss very personally, and has been doing everything it can to protect its own trademarks. Another company that is very protective of its own trademark is Nike and its Air Jordan logo. Nike has filed disputes against a number of similar logos, including Gronk's own logo, a ski wear brand, and this logo for a CrossFit gym. One of the most protected logos on Earth has to be the Olympics logo. Using this logo is completely off limits, even if you don't intend to profit from using it. Apple has also put their many disputes down to protecting their copyright by law, claiming it will cause confusion. While this may be true, the dispute with Prepare isn't even the same fruit, and they even disputed a singer-songwriter who used the stage name Frankie Pineapple, claiming that both were the names of fruit, and thus conveyed a similar commercial impression. It might just be me, but a minimalist depiction of an apple is not going to be confused with an exploding pineapple grenade. Apple may be the most well-known company using the word Apple in its name, but for decades they themselves were the subject of lawsuits over their name by a company founded by the Beatles called Apple Corps. There were several cases where Apple was sued for copyright infringement. In the first case from 1978, Apple lost and had to pay $80,000. So Apple Computers agreed not to enter the music industry, and Apple Corps wouldn't enter the computer business. But in 2006, Apple would eventually win the trademark dispute against Apple Corps regarding iTunes, and Apple Corps would lose their trademark for the Green Granny Smith Apple. So in 2011, unsurprisingly, Apple filed for that very same trademark. Most recently in 2023, Apple tried to claim the IP to an image of an apple in the country of Switzerland, which is home to the Fruit Union Suisse, a company that is 112 years old and more than double the age of Apple. 
Apple's bullying is unfortunately part of a larger global trend, where trademark holders are encouraged to file for trademarks they don't really need to protect their own brand, but more importantly it's to prevent anyone else from owning them. This is still ongoing at the moment, but in this case how can anyone really compete with a company of this size with this much money? The majority of these disputes are aimed at small business owners who don't have the power and money to fight Apple, so most aren't even challenged. So because of this, I blame Steve Jobs. <laughs>